yeah, for one yeah, day yeah. in my child, Tanya. And had unprotected sex, and I was pregnant again. I was only with two two different people at separate times. Yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah. you're right. You all are still sleeping together? You say you're sorry. You need to go. You guys say you're sorry. sorry. We've got Miss Luce bringing Mr. Zuniga to court, claiming he's the daddy of her baby boy, Marley. But hold on, it's not just about the baby. She's also hitting him up for over $2,700 in baby expenses. Mr. Zuniga is having none of it. He's convinced he's not the father, and he's even brought the big guns a lie detector test. Buckle up, folks, because this case was a wild ride, and we're about to dive right in. Miss Luce, you are suing the defendant for $2,716.86, back child care expenses for your son, Marley. Yes, Your Honor. You say there's no need for a paternity test because you're certain he is your baby's father. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Zuniga, you say you don't owe her a dime because you're not her son's father. You've petitioned the court for a lie detector test. Miss Luce dropped the bombshell that they only had a fling for two and a half weeks. Talk about a juicy start. That's right, folks, just a fortnight of fun, and now we're in paternity court. Mr. Zuniga was throwing shade left and right, claiming Miss Luce was easy and that he'd always thought he was sterile because of sports injuries and past relationships without any baby outcomes. Talk about a plot twist. That's, Mr. That's Zuniga, do you have any hand. other children? No, ma'am. I've always thought I was sterile. You do? Yes. Putting the long relationships aside and trying to have, you know, kids with them and consulting doctors. I did a lot of sports. I've had a lot of sports related injuries. I think that might have something to do with it. I've been in at least three long, long term relationships where I've tried to have children with them. But wait, there was more. Miss Luce admitted she did the deed with a few other dudes after Mr. Zuniga, but also insisted that during their brief fling, she was all about him. Mr. Zuniga wasn't buying it, though. He was convinced she was cheating the whole time and even said some random lady told him that Miss Luce was getting busy with her husband. Scandalous! So you believe she was going over to this other gentleman's not, house not and he wasn't a I brother figure, that. he was really... There's this one instance where this lady came up to me and she told me that while I was with her, she was cheating on me the whole time with her husband. And he, he looks just like the father. Red hair and blue eyes. Okay, so the gentleman he's talking about, Ms. Luce, have you had a relationship with this man? And just when you think you've seen it all, in walked Mr. Zuniga's own mother, and she was on Team Luce. Yeah, she was absolutely furious at her son. According to her, Mr. Zuniga was just like his dad and needed to step up. She even had pictures to prove the baby looked like her son. Drama level, sky high. But Your Honor, if you look at those pictures, their eyes look so much alike, and they have the same features, the dark circles. My grandson was born with jaundice, Your Honor, yeah, and my out, son was born with jaundice. I came my out son with has a muscle spasm in his eye. Brown hair. My grandson brown has eyes. a muscle I look spasm just like in his my eye. Father. I look. No, this kid looks nothing like. Yes, me. because my son was is 50% Mexican. His dad was 100%. Does he look like my son, Your Honor? But Mr. Zuniga was standing his ground. He was confident that the baby looked nothing like him, and that he had his eyes on another potential daddy with red hair and blue eyes. The tension is so thick, you could cut it with a knife as they go back and forth with accusations flying faster than a cheetah on a treadmill. And all the while, Miss Luce was holding on to hope that Mr. Zuniga would come around for little Marley. He went through without a dad and he's gonna have the same thing happen. The more I see him grow up, the less he looked like. Because he doesn't matter. know you. And he doesn't have to look like you. You don't look like me the more you grew up, but I knew you came from me. Yeah, but I came straight from you. There's no doubt in that. It doesn't matter. I know who the it's father is. He has red hair. Then, bam! The lie detector results came in, and let's just say things were not looking good for Miss Luce. Deception indicated, but the judge wasn't having any of their nonsense. She ordered a DNA test on the spot, and we were all left hanging as the two stars of the show were whisked away for the big test. We're going to order a paternity test. And I order both of you leave here immediately, submit to the testing, and return to this courtroom where we will have the results. Are we clear? Yes, That's why I'm Jerome, here, please Honor. escort them out. Court is adjourned. Fast forward, and we were back in the courtroom, hearts were pounding, and we were all waiting for the DNA results. Would Mr. Zuniga's suspicions be confirmed, or would Miss Luce have the last laugh? The tension was through the roof! Miss Luce pleaded with Mr. Zuniga, reminding him of the good times, how he promised to be there, but he wasn't having it. He was still hung up on that lie detector test. You've both submitted to the DNA testing, am I correct? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. All right, and before we get to the results of that testing, Miss Luce, I have to ask you, is there any else you'd like to say to Mr. Zuniga? Yes. You were there from the start. 
Yeah. I you started out I being a good dad, sure then you've vanished. You have be been in your own kid. And then, the moment of truth. The results were in, and well, folks, this one was a coin flip. Is Mr. Zuniga the father? Is he going to have to cough up the cash for those baby expenses? Will he step up and be the dad he promised to be? Or will he run for the hills? The drama never ends in this court, but the truth always comes out. Mr. Zuniga, you are his father. Oh, thank oh you, God. Jesus. <laughs> you're sorry. You need to go, you you're sorry. Your son. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Wait, Maybe that's yours. Wait, you lied. Okay, but look at you. Yes, I may have right, lied. Over that. We're Whatever getting over that. Whatever test says it, he is your son. We've got a doozy for you today. This next case was nothing short of a soap opera. So there was Miss Holthouse marching into the courtroom with a mission to prove who the daddy of her three-month-old son, Zayden, was. But here's the twist. The potential daddies were, uh, a guy who's totally out of the picture, or B, and this is true, her own mother's boyfriend. The crowd couldn't believe their ears. Miss Hold house, you are here to prove paternity of your three-month-old son, Zayden. Yes, Your Honor. Shockingly, you confess it's either a man you shared a sexual relationship with who wants nothing to do with your child, or the defendant who happens to be your mother's boyfriend. Mr. Chenault, you are Ms. Holdhouse's mother's boyfriend. Yes, Sean. Mr. Shinwald, the mother's boyfriend, stood there owning up to his fling with Ms. Holthouse, but was adamant he wasn't the father. And get this, Ms. Holthouse's mom was just outside the courtroom. She was steaming and ready to drop a bombshell on this whole mess. Mr. Shinwald revealed how the affair unraveled. It all started with a text gone awry. A simple typo led to flirty texts, and next thing you know, they were at a park making babies. Everyone was horrified and Judge Lake was in utter disbelief. I had not really thought about it until I got a phone call from him. And he was talking about having sex and going somewhere. I snuck out of my grandma's house that night and we went to a park. And what happened at the park? We had sexual relations. So you got a phone call while you're at your grandmother's house? Yes, Your Honor. What did he say? What he? What did I mean by that text that I sent him? And Miss Holthouse confessed that she sent the text on purpose, even with her mom sitting right there. That's some next level daring. And when Mr. Shinwald called to confront her, they decided to sneak out to a park and well, they got it on. What did you say to her, Mr. Chanel? Just asked her if she wanted to go out and have a good time with me. And you said? Sure. So how long did the sexual relationship last? It was about six months. Six months? Yes, yeah, sure. Did your mother have any idea this was going on? She didn't have any idea until Mr. Chenault and her got locked up and he got out while he was in jail. This secret rendezvous lasted for six whole months and her mom didn't have a clue. But how did Mama Bear find out? When Mr. Shinwald and Miss Holthouse's mom got locked up and through some sneaky moves, Miss Holthouse ended up confessing to the affair. And yes, they were still hitting the sheets during this time. Gross! She had kind of manipulated both of us saying that I told her about what we did and I never said anything. And she said that he told her about what we did, and he never said anything. And who confessed? Actually, I confessed. You did? Yes, ma'am. Were you also still sleeping with her mother during that time? Yes. Jump to when Miss Holthouse found out she was pregnant. She had no idea who the daddy was, but knew it could be Mr. Shinwald or another guy who was just not interested in being a dad. And get this, she had to sneak out yet again to tell Mr. Shinwald he might be the father. Oh, the drama. When you find out you're pregnant, whose child do you think it is? At the moment, it could have been two guys. Which two? Um, Mr. Chenault and another guy. And I had to sneak out and go tell Mr. Chenault that it could be his, maybe. You were honest? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Chenault, I'm guessing at this point, hoping, she throws you out at this point. Now hold on to your hat. Miss Holthouse's mom has a 10 month old with Mr. Shinwald, which means if he's also Zayden's dad, her baby sister would be her son's half sibling. Is your mind blown yet? Cause mine sure is. Miss Bogardus, the mom, finally enters the courtroom and she's visibly shattered. She had suspected something fishy when her daughter would get all cozy with her boyfriend at every opportunity. And she's been with this man for two decades. He was there when she was a toddler. Can you even fathom that? Now you have a 10 month old child by Mr. Chanel. Yes. And you may have a three month old grandchild who's also your child's half sibling. That's correct, Your Honor. And I can see this is tearing you 
apart. But wait, it gets wilder. They all live together with strict rules to keep Mr. Shinwald and Miss Holthouse from getting too close. It's like they're living in a reality show with no talking, no texting, and no alone time. It's insane. Miss Holthouse, her daughter. We're not allowed to be in the same room together. We're not allowed to talk or text each other. We're not supposed to really even be around each other. And if we are in the same room together, she turns down the TV so, so she can hear the conversations that we're having. Hold on. You all got all these ground rules. You're orbiting around one another in this house so you have no contact. Mr. Shinwald and Miss Holthouse are lying all over the place, but Judge Lake is not having it and neither are we. She's calling their bluff, saying they haven't been intimate since September and we're calling foul play too. The tension is palpable. So Judge Lake throws down the gauntlet offering a lie detector test to see if they're still getting frisky, but guess what? They shut it down. What secrets are they keeping from us, folks? To the lie detector test? On the question of whether or not you all are still sleeping together? No, Your Honor, I won't. I'm sorry? No, Your Honor, I won't. How about you, ma'am? No, Your Honor. Anybody have anything to say? No, Your Honor, I really don't have anything to say, Your Honor. Anybody? No, Your Honor. All right, well, that's your business. Moving on. As the case comes to a close, we're all perched on the edge of our seats. Will Mr. Shinwald turn out to be the father, or will Miss Holthouse's son be left fatherless? Is little Zayden's dad the same man who fathered his aunt, or is there another twist in the tale? It's the moment of truth, and the DNA test results are ready. Mr. Shinwald, it has been determined by this court. You are not. I do think that we all need counseling. We've got another wild and unbelievable case from the vault. And trust us, you're going to want to grab your popcorn for this one. The tension was thick as they stepped into the courtroom. And Judge Lake was ready to unravel this mystery. Miss Parker, in your suit, you claim Mr. Morton fathered your seven-month-old son, Aaron, while in a relationship with his current girlfriend. Yes, Your Honor. You say the only reason he denies paternity is because his girlfriend turned him against you because she's been unable to conceive a child with him. Yes, Your Honor. In addition to the paternity test, you're suing for $2,047 in back child expenses. Yes, Your Honor. So we kick things off with Miss Parker pointing fingers at Mr. Morton, shouting from the rooftops that he's the proud daddy of her seven-month-old daughter, Erin. But here's where it gets bananas. Apparently, Mr. Morton's new squeeze did a little whispering in his ear, turning him against Miss Parker because they couldn't make babies together. Talk about a plot twist, right? If he has a girlfriend. First of all, Your Honor, that's my baby father. Anytime I want to have sex with him, I'm going to have sex with him. You understand? Like, I was vulnerable. He called me. So, you know, we did what we did. So, hold on. You have a child with Mr. Morton. Yes, I have already. a five-year-old son. And he's not the child in question. No, Aaron is. We're off to a quick start as Miss Parker spills the tea on her tangled love triangle with Mr. Morton and his lady friend. Threesomes? Yep, unbelievable, right? And we're only getting started. But you also still continued a sexual relationship. Yes, with the both of them. Both of them? Yeah. You were having We've sex had with... Sex, I have sex with both of them. With Mr. Morton? And Mrs. Lemon. And his girlfriend? Yes, yes, your honor. Yes. Oh, so a threesome at the same time or you have two separate relationships? You no, know, threesome at the same time, separate relationship. If I don't want to have sex with her and I want to have sex with him, that's what happens. Fast forward and it's time for Mr. Morton to give his testimony. He hits back with a denial so loud it echoes through the courtroom. He's playing the this timeline doesn't add up card and the court is suddenly a detective agency probing into the nitty gritty details of Miss Parker's love escapades. Talk about a showdown. There's a possibility that this could be your child? It could not be my child because the timing is not right at all. I'm not tripping off of that. I know that that's my son's father. <laughs> I know. He looks exactly like my other son. And so you're doubtful, Mr. Morton, because you say there's a timing issue. Yes, she so supposed I to have got pregnant your doubt. in May, but from my understanding, that's only would be seven months if she. I had never my said son I got pregnant in May, Your Honor. Okay. The heat is turned up by several notches when Miss Parker and Mr. Morton spill the deets on their romantic escapades, unprotected encounters. Check miscalculated due dates. Oh, you betcha! Apparently, Mr. Morton, despite his initial doubts, was with Miss Parker during the kid's birth, playing Mr. Daddy. So what's with the sudden change of heart? Hold on to your hats, folks. Miss Parker is suing for childcare expenses, and Mr. Morton's wallet could take a hit. Okay, 
this clock is done. I can't. You can't. We downtown. You can't clock the guy it. walks up to her. They talking and everything. And he swears up and down, earn is his. She had to keep reminding him that it's not yours, boy. It's not yours. I had sex with you after he was already in my stomach. Exactly. I said. But you told us that you didn't have sex with nobody. I just said I didn't have unprotected sex. That's all over the place, Your Honor. That's what it is. That's a lie. She was all over the place. Let's let's get some. Now here's where it gets really spicy. Enter Miss Dunlap, Mr. Morton's mother, armed with her own testimony. She's had front row seats to the father-son bonding extravaganza and swears that baby Aaron is her grandchild. Meanwhile, Miss Parker was eyeing those child support checks once the DNA results drop. And can we talk about the judge having to be a therapist? Highlighting the messy relationship saga between Mr. Morton and Miss Lemon? Unresolved issues, anyone? She did have him early. So as far as support system, it was me and my daughter, which is Eric's sister, and Mr. Mother. Morton's sister. And her mother. And excuse me, I'm talking. It don't matter. It does. It don't. So therefore, did you uh, just let her disrespect your mother? Yeah, mind? real bad. I'm yeah. sorry, I had to catch that. Come again. Huh? Okay. Honestly, I don't even know why she's over there. She don't do nothing. That, that, my, that's my it. Doesn't, ma it doesn't matter. Grandson. And just when we thought the curtain was about to close, the judge threw in some relationship advice, like Oprah on steroids. She urges the lovebirds to untangle their mess for the sake of the kids. But hold on to your popcorn, guys, because the real cliffhanger is yet to come. I have to ask this: Are you all gonna continue? to have this unprotected sex. No and sex. This... No sex, Your Honor. He's good. He's good with his, with his wife. <laughs> How long that's gonna last? <laughs> Feel me? I mean, well, what's, what's, what's the point of you knocking what we have? He's good. He's I mean, good. Ebony. I'm knocking it because but, of the Your fact Honor, that I this never, is the reason why Honor, my son's I never, first denied. of all, I'm, I, 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 this is out of character for me. I have never. Judge Lake drops the paternity bomb like confetti at a New Year's Eve party. Mr. Morton's life could be about to change. Hugh gasps, cheers, and probably a mic drop. The DNA results are in, and Mr. Morton is about to know his fate. Mr. Morton, you are Aaron's father. Thank you. I told you. Like, I'm not no... Come on. Put the mom on when I get up. To half of the child care expenses she has incurred thus far, you admit you contributed $30. Is that correct? Yes. Let's jump into a wild case that had everyone in the courtroom on the edge of their seat. It's Sutton v. Smith, folks and guys. This episode was a roller coaster of emotions. So hold on to your seats. This one's about to get bumpy. Miss Sutton, you say you believed you were in an exclusive relationship with Mr. Smith until you got pregnant and discovered he was living a double life. You say the defendant has denied your daughter Kaylee, and you are in court to prove he is your child's father. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Sutton gave her testimony first, claiming that Mr. Smith was her one and only until she got pregnant, and bam! She finds out he's leading a double life. Can you believe it? But wait, there's more! Mr. Smith and his mom, oh boy, they come in swinging, calling Miss Sutton a pathological liar and accusing her of having a whole list of partners. Mothers say Miss Sutton is a pathological liar whose list of sexual partners extends well beyond just you. You admit to having two sexual encounters with the plaintiff, but say your relationship was anything but exclusive. What do you mean he had a double life? Him and his other baby mama were together when he was supposed to be with me. Like, he was staying with me. Men, now, Mr. Smith admitted to a couple of hookups with Miss Sutton, but insisted that their relationship was as exclusive as a public restroom. Not at all! And Miss Sutton, she's not having any of it. According to her, Mr. Smith was living with her, coming home to her every night. But then, the plot instantly thickened when she tagged him in an ultrasound pic on Facebook, and another woman slid into her DMs. Yeah, I see him every day. He used to come home every night. And then all of a sudden, when I get pregnant, it's an issue. When I post my picture of my ultrasound, when I got pregnant with my daughter on Facebook, I tagged him in it, and that's when she messaged me, and she told me who she was. By my understanding, when she was pregnant with their daughter, he said he, he wasn't with her. He said he would just want to be there for, for the baby, and that was it. This other woman, she's Mr. Smith's other baby mama, and she's telling Miss Sutton that Mr. Smith was supposed to be with her. And Mr. Smith? His defense is like, whoa, hold up! What about Jimmy, Joe, and John? Yep, he literally said that. So I, as we had sex, I had went out of town to Cleveland, Ohio on a, uh, on a vacation. It was on the 4th of July, and she called my cousin phone and something like, um, is DJ around you? And she gave me the phone, and she like, uh, and she said, oh, I'm pregnant by you. I'm like, you pregnant by who? She's like, by you, I'm like, him, you lying, you gotta be lying. I'm like, what about Jimmy, Joe, and John? But Miss Sutton, 
She was not backing down without a fight. She was shouting at the top of her lungs, letting everyone who could listen know that her baby looked just like Mr. Smith. The audience couldn't help but laugh when she pointed out that nobody in her family has a forehead that big. Ooh, the shade is strong. So you knew for a fact she was sleeping with other people? Yes, yes. Were you, Miss Sutton? No. You've been denying my baby from day one. From day one, when she looked just like you, ain't nobody in my family got no big forehead like that. That baby looked just like you. Even your partners on the street on fabric say that she looked just like you. Yeah, I, so I know they will, because every me. time they look so around, Ms. you Sutton. posting a picture. Every time they look around, you posting a picture. Look at him, look at him. Miss Sutton's dropping bombs. She says Mr. Smith didn't show up for two DNA tests. Mr. Smith clapped back, calling Miss Sutton ghetto and nasty. Miss Sutton's mom also jumped in, calling out Mr. Smith for being bought with cigarettes and beer. But hold on, folks, because Miss Collie, Mr. Smith's mom, has got her own tea to spill. She accuses Miss Sutton of sleeping with their family members and even catching her in bed with one. But Miss Sutton came back with her own clap back. The lease was in her name. Okay. And, and, and the same uh, how she said that's supposed to be mine. Hold on. Just hold on. Just, just recently. recently. Hold on. Just hold on. Recently. Just recently, she just stopped fooling with one of my family members' husband. Okay, but the lease is in and my name, like isn't it right? And the lease was in my name, but you were staying okay, with this Miss Collie. If I can have somebody on there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I pay that rent. The tension was through the roof. And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, Miss Sutton started talking about how Mr. Smith would sweet talk her from jail, promising her the world, and how she loved him. But he denied her and their baby. The courtroom had turned into an emotional battlefield, and Judge Lake was trying to make sense of it all, telling Mr. Smith he's got to face the consequences of his actions. Miss Sutton was clearly hurting, and Mr. Smith was worried about losing his seven-year relationship if the baby ended up being his. I don't. I loved him. I loved him with all my heart. And for him to deny me and my child, like, that's something serious. Because he's lying to his family, lying to the other baby mama, lying to his mama. Now, I just wanted to understand where this was coming from, and now I do. Mr. Smith, I want to give you a chance to respond, but I just ask you to do so respectfully. Yes, ma'am. But then, the moment of truth arrives. The DNA results are in. And let me tell you, you'd think it was an Olympic swimming contest with all the breaths being held. Would Mr. Smith's fears become reality? Was he the father of Miss Sutton's daughter? Would he have to say goodbye to his long-term relationship? And what about Miss Sutton, who had been raising Kaylee all alone for three years? Would she finally get the help she needed? Let's find out. Mr. Smith, you are the father. Thank you, after three years. Okay, three years! Three years! If you've never had an emotional ride on the paternity court show, this would definitely make tears roll down your eyes. Mr. Hampton tries to find his long-lost daughter, whom he hasn't seen for over 20 years. It's a burst of emotions, and I hope you're ready for all the juice. Ms. Brown, you stand before the court with your mother, Alicia Brown. You say your world was recently turned upside down when you were contacted by a man whom you've never even heard of before, claiming to be your birth father. Now that man, Mr. Hampton, is waiting uh, in our courtroom hallway and he will join us in a moment. The whole long lost daddy-daughter reunion starts when Miss Brown is contacted by Mr. Hampton, claiming he is her father. Miss Brown, of course, had no idea who her biological parents were. Why? Well, she was adopted only when she was three months old. I was recently contacted by someone claiming to be my sister on what's called Instagram. And from there, he messaged me on Facebook. And he said, Kayla, I think I finally found your Facebook. Please let me know. I have no idea how much you or your adoption parents know about how things were, but I'll be more than willing to answer your questions that they may have. And I have pictures also. Talk to you later. It was like a shocking revelation to Miss Brown, being that she had never even met him her entire life. Mr. Hampton walks into the courtroom. My God, does he have a lot to say about how she is his long lost daughter? It's mind blowing, trust me. I've been looking for my daughter for 20 years, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, I was in love with their mother, Your Honor, and- uh, You all were in a relationship. Yes, we were in a relationship, Your Honor, and uh, she was pregnant, Your Honor. This was my first child. I'm the one that, that gave her, her her name, Your Honor. I, I did everything that I... So you were participating in this pregnancy and in the birth. Revelations keep coming up and soul-crushing secrets start to pop out. Mr. Hampton tries to tell his story about how he couldn't be there to be her daddy. But was Miss Brown buying any of it? Nope, you can bet she wasn't. I wouldn't if I were in her shoes too. To Alaska uh, to be with her mother while she was uh, pregnant. And I was there at the hospital when she was born. 
Um, I'm confused. If you did all that stuff, I don't know why I'm here with my mom today and not with you. To be honest, I'm just being honest. Your mother was going through some problems. I had the opportunity to take you when uh, I, I met her at the mall. Now, from Mr. Hampton's narration and the sad face he had on, you could very much tell he wasn't lying. He really wanted her to be his daughter. He wasn't just talking people he had enough evidence to back up his claim. But Miss Brown was pretty defensive. She's pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I've kept this photo for years, Your Honor, because I, I knew someday that I would I would find her, Your Honor. And who's in this photo, Mr. Hampton? That's me, that's my daughter here, and, and, and that's her mother, Your Honor. So, Miss Brown, what are you thinking as you see these photos? I look at that baby. That could be you or you. It, it's just, there's nothing that distinguishedly says it's me. Mr. Hampton remains insistent on his story. He keeps telling the judge that he knows for a fact that she's his daughter. Well, brace up, because your minds are about to be blown. When he is asked the last time he saw her, his asner leaves everyone in shock. Trust me, you'd be amazed too. Before today, if this is in fact your daughter. I haven't, I haven't seen her since she, was, since she was about two weeks old, Your Honor. About two weeks old. She's two weeks old, Your Honor. In your statement to the court, you said you have a picture of her at two years old. How did you get that picture? Your Honor, when I went back to Alaska, Your Honor, I came across her mother, Your Honor, and uh, her birth mother gave this picture to, Jerome, to me, Jerome, let me Honor. see this picture. Now, Miss Brown's adopted mother walks up the stage and drops the most surprising revelation. Trust me, it would leave you asking the question, who is telling the truth? It was starting to look like someone had been playing mind games. And believe me, the judge was hell-bent on finding out who it was. I want to hear from your adoptive mother. Um, Miss Brown, please stand and first ask you, have you ever seen this picture of your daughter? Yes, I have. You have? I have, and I'm, I'm curious to know how her biological mother got that picture. Oh, okay, wait. So you know this to be your daughter? Yes, that's my daughter. But... But I never gave that picture to anybody, and I don't know where. Miss Brown's mother claimed she had her baby girl brought in several different times to the hospital to determine who her real father was. Did they ever get to know the real father? No, they didn't. The big question now is, where has Mr. Hampton been all this time? So they Hold knew that, that piece of evidence. Father. Let me just see this first. I took this child several different times, at least for sure three times, if not four times, in for blood tests and watched them draw blood from her to try to determine who her father was. And they never could determine who the father was. So they kept th listing different men. Okay, now they, now we think this is the father. Can you please bring her in for another pattern, another test? Well, the moment we've all been waiting for is here, and the truth is about to be revealed, people. It's been one tricky ride here, but all that suspense is about to be over. I hope you guys are ready, because I am. Mr. Hampton, you have desperately waited for this answer. You are not her father. I can't be right, Your Honor. But that is me in the picture. Trust me, you and I both know we never want to be in his shoes. After having so much suspicion, feeling like he was being lied to, having some doubts that he wasn't the dad of their little girl, he dragged his girl's ass to court to find out the truth. Hold on to your seats, folks. We're about to have some real child battle drama. Mr. Green. Yes, ma'am. You That's claim me. your rights as a potential father to the child in question today two-year-old Angel Bryant were basically stolen from you. Yes, Your Honor. You say at 56 years old and having never fathered a child previously, you've had doubts about paternity from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Now jumping right into the love triangle, or should I say, the triangle of heartbreaks. It all started on New Year's night. Sounds romantic, right? I bet your jaws are about to drop soon. Mr. Green met Miss Duncan that sweet evening, and as the gentleman that he is, he took her to his house for some coffee, and I would say have a good time, if you know what I mean. Mr. Green, how did you meet Miss Duncan? How did I meet her? Well, it was New Year's night. She was out, I was out, of course. I saw her staggling a little bit, walking home alone from the club. I took her home, then we just talked for a little bit, exchanged numbers. Then shortly thereafter, you guys began dating? I don't have sex, I'm not a sexually active person. We did not sleep together, this was about three months later. I can't be the only one who thought something fishy was gonna happen, or was I? Well, after getting all mushy with Miss Duncan, he thought he had met the love of his life. The bombshell is about to drop. She had another secret guy who she also happened to be having a good time with. Miss Duncan would, for sure, win the award for being a sleek lady. You weren't talking to the guy anymore, but you were. Yes. And you weren't just talking to him. No. You were still having sex with him, too. Yes. 
See, I didn't All know right. that. I didn't know nothing about a relationship. So you thought she was single when you met her? Yes, Your Honor. So what happened when you discovered you were pregnant? I got sick. I was eating buffalo wings, and I was start hurting in my right side real bad. Going forward in their love drama, Miss Duncan found out she was pregnant. I sure think that's too quick. Getting pregnant just a few months after she meets Mr. Green? Come on, that's just all shades of suspicious. Of course, Mr. Green got the first call, and the mind-blowing thing is that he wasn't excited about the news. He was trying to add the math, and all his brain could tell him was, how is this possible? Your Honor, I figured that if I'm supposed to be the child's father, I would have been there at the time of birth, and also, my name would be on the birth certificate, Your Honor. And so that's not the case? No. And in fact, while she was pregnant, I was informed that she would call me. I said, well, call me when you get ready to have the child so I can be there at birth. I would like to cut the cord. As the tales of deceit keep unfolding, the truth starts to come to the surface. And trust me when I tell you, there's so much more. After having her baby, she comes out with a new story seven months after birth and tells Mr. Green that he might not be the father of the kid. Ouch, that's for sure going to leave a mark on his heart. So Mr. Green, at what point did you find out there was another man in the picture? I'm getting to that right now, Your Honor. Okay. It was like six or seven months down the road after doing her pregnancy. Then she told me, she said, well, the baby may not be yours. That's after six or seven months. Of pregnancy or yes. when the baby was born? Six or seven months during pregnancy. All right. And that's why I found out the baby may be who she said it may be. I was surprised this didn't turn into punching spray. Mr. Green came home with Miss Duncan and their little girl and met a guy waiting for them in the house. Let the drums roll in. The guy waiting for them was the other guy who was also having a good time with Miss Duncan. Ding, ding, ding. Now that's wild. What happened when you saw him? I don't know if it was a birthday or Mother's Day. Okay, I took her home and he was outside waiting for her. And that kind of hurt. And he said, I come to see my daughter, my daughter. I said, that's your daughter, that's my daughter. And that's what, like embarrassing, you know. He was already there waiting for her to come home. Really? And so you out as a family and then come home and some other man is talking about he's coming to pick up your family. Yes, Your Honor. If you think that's all the juice in this story, hold on to your seats because I'm about to blow your mind. Another epic heartbreak for Mr. Green. She says she wasn't sure who had the kid, so she played both of them, hoping one of them would come true. Speechless is how I feel right now. So while he was sitting around waiting for the phone to ring, I called him the other guy the answer. Yeah, oh, so hold I... on now. If the other guy was there, you called him and he didn't answer? Did you already... You gonna have them both there? I called man? him. No. No, Your Honor, no. So after he didn't answer, then you called the other guy? Yes. So that guy was up there and the baby was born, you put his name on the birth certificate. Yes, I have evidence. I guess it's high time we brought this paternity war zone to a close. Will it be all nice, Mr. Green, who gets to go home saying I'm the dad? Or would it be the other guy who was in the shadows having a good time with Miss Duncan? The answer to that question sits like a princess in the envelope. Let the truth be told. Mr. Ronald Green, you are not her father. Are we certain it is the other gentleman? <laughs> It's going to work out. <laughs> We've got Mr. Wilson here, who had been accusing Miss Dean of turning his home into a love nest. The plot thickens as we delve into the saga of baby Jakaya, a 17-month-old cutie caught in the crossfire of a relationship gone sour. Mr. Wilson, you've opened your case today to prove that Miss Dean's 17-month-old daughter, Jakaya, is not your biological child. You say you moved her into your home, laid out the red carpet, only to find out she was rolling around with other men in your home. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So here's the lowdown on their love story. Plaintiff claimed he rolled out the red carpet, only to be met with disappointment. Oh, the drama. Accusations from planning the baby to concessions were the order of the day here. So, Mr. Wilson, why don't you believe that you're the father of Miss Dean's daughter, Jakaya? Your Honor, I don't believe I'm the father because I have been fooled by multiple females in the past. Oh, uh, okay. What do you mean you planned this? And I have been going down this rodeo for far too long. I signed on a birth certificate. Um, I'm, I'm not there physically, I just can't handle it. Well, these guys were just about throwing shades at each other, one way or another. Facebook shenanigans and whispered conversations gave birth to only the baby, but this whole mess as well. She was on my Facebook page, liking my comments so and was, my, was my pictures. Boo, so was, you And she, she hit me up like, what you up to? And this, that, and the other. And at the time, I was taking care of my stepfather, had my own house, car work, and things of that nature. And because I had previous relationships with her in the past, I was single, she was single, we decided to meet up. 
and we met up and um, we actually planned the baby. The baby was just not a coincidence. Well, the supposed concessions and Facebook likes turned into a baby making scheme. But oh, the horror. Mr. Wilson starts doubting when inconsistencies arise and Ms. Dean's storytelling takes a detour. Concessions turn into whispers, echoes, and late night visits. The confusion was real as he dug into the details, trying to unravel the mysteries of Jakaya's conception. Did you sign the birth certificate? Yes, I did. You did? Yes, ma'am. So you accepted this baby as your own? I did. And at that time when you did that, you believed you were the father? Didn't have no doubts. And you basically you thought you all had brought the plan to fruition that you had said together that we're gonna have a baby, and here's my baby that I've been wanting to have. Correct. As the relationship grew, so did the suspicions. Miss Dean wasted no breath in calling Mr. Wilson a liar. Oh, somebody was twisting things in this love story. For sure, the plot thickens and the truth still remains elusive. He knew exactly what was going on and with that other guy. He just don't want to take responsibility and be a man and stand up. Oh. He came over to visit. He is lying. He came he over to visit. He 30 days? He came, he lied. It wasn't no 30 days. How was it 30 days when we was having concessions all that time? <laughs> he is lying, bro. Fasten your seatbelts. We are about to dive into the birth certificate saga, along with the EX's drama. Mr. Wilson went ahead and talked to the infamous ex-girlfriend, Lo, and behold, the story took a different turn, but he still signed on the dotted line, embracing fatherhood. What was up with that now? Then I have no doubts, but he said the complete opposite of what she's given me. And I asked him, I said, if y is y'all having a child together? He's like, yeah. I said, what y'all supposed to be having? He said, a little girl. He went into details. So there, that Lying. fueled my doubts. Wait a minute, this was before the baby was born? Yes, before. So why'd you sign the birth certificate? I'm gonna tell you why. When Wait. the baby was born, it was so light and bright. I was like, he's so dark, she's dark. It's no way he's the father. Moving on, Miss Dean goes into quite a long rant regarding all the disappointments she faced. Mr. Wilson wasn't stepping up to the plate, and when he did, well, things took a different turn. He had the baby trying to take the baby so he can be with someone else. He, 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 he used me, baby. She watched too many lifetimes, no, Your Honor. No, he used me, Your Honor. After I had that baby, Your Honor, he proposed to me, told me that we were gonna get married, moved in together. He lied, took the baby, tried to move away. Well, tried to, he had the baby in his care. He never took her, because I gave her to him. Oh, the tension was building as the court got ready to unveil the truth about Jakaya's paternity. Wilson Wilson's desire for closure and Dean's anticipation collided as the revelation was about to unfold. Let's see whether the daddy gets to hear those four words or not. Mr. Wilson, you are not the father. <laughs> Miss Faithful Stop. I was actually happy. I don't gotta deal with neither one of them. I hope you guys are prepared to get your hearts broken because Mr. Hoyer's story will leave you speechless. He tries to find his biological father, only to be told he died a long time ago. What's worse? His family doesn't want to have anything to do with him. Let's dive right into the heartbreaking drama, shall we? Mr. Hoyer, after 14 years of being in foster care, you desperately searched for your father. Sadly, that search ended when you learned that your alleged father, Mr. James Horn, was tragically killed. To make matters worse, you claim his family rejected you, and so you're here today to prove to them that you are indeed his son. Mr. Hoyer starts by talking about his rough childhood, growing up without a dad in his life. It was tough for him as a kid, trust me. He wanted a father so bad, he was willing to do anything to get one. But did his dad ever come to get him? Well, I guess you know the answer to that already. What was it like growing up without a father? Your Honor, it was like hell growing up without a father. I was taken away when I was three and nine. I was in foster care for 14 years, got adopted when I was 14. Never got to learn how to shave, never got to learn how to tie a tie. I don't know who my father is because my mom used to be a stripper. I feel that if I did know my biological father, my life would have been totally different. Now this part will definitely leave you speechless, I promise. He pays a visit to his mom just to say hi and do the usual check-in, then boom, he sees his mom's new boyfriend and he tells Mr. Hoyer the most shocking news. When did you learn that? A couple months ago, it was my 23rd birthday. I went to my mom's house just to go say hi and her new boyfriend was like, you look like your father, which stopped me right there in my tracks. So I was like, wait, you know my father? He was like, yeah, your father is James Horn. And this was the first person that had looked at you and said, you look just like him. Yes, Your Honor, and I actually have a, um, a photo here 
Jerome, may I see that, please? Getting to hear that he wanted to meet his family so bad. He went on to search for his family and more revelations popped up. Trust me, your mind is about to be blown. Mr. Hoyer didn't particularly get a welcome party. The grandmom for sure wasn't buying the idea of him being part of their family. Why? She said her son had no kids before he died. Crazy, right? He thinks he's your grandson. What were you thinking? Well, um, my son Arthur brought him in. And he said, I want you to see him. See, is this your grandson? And here's the word I said. I said no, because I hadn't heard it before. Because for my son left me, he said he didn't have any kids. And I'm going by what he say. Things started to look really shaky in the courtroom. Everybody's story happened to just not match what Mr. Hoyer was trying to explain. Here comes another shocking revelation. His mom says there might be another man who might be his father. Damn. I never heard him say that. Never. So I guess your secret was safe because they have no idea. It was a secret. I didn't even know I was really pregnant until I was six months. But like I have told my son, there is another man before this man. The courtroom is just tense. It's filled with so much suspicion because there's starting to be a lot of coincidences. Now Mr. Hoyer's mom says she took her son to his father's family and she got the surprise of her life. She was shunned by Miss Horn, who happened to be Mr. Hoyer's alleged father's sister. It's a really messy situation right now, believe me. This young lady came and knocked at my, my mother's door. She says, I have your brother's child. I'm like, that's not my brother's child. Get out of here. I mean, we was trying to keep our cool, but this is not my brother's child. And why were you so sure? He didn't look nothing like us. Nothing. Didn't have no resemblance of my brother. Now the alleged father's sister was beyond furious because Mr. Hoyer's mom said some really awful things about her brother before he died. Oh, trust me. You could see it in her eyes that she was beyond upset. It's sad this young man got to hear what we got to say, but when she told him anything about my brother, it was awful. She told him he was a crackhead. She told him he was a drunk. She told him he wasn't no good. My brother was Excuse upstanding. Excuse me, did I tell you that? Yes, you did. No, I did not. I remember the first and day I'm ever, it. ever, I'm ever. It. Now that all made this last part all the more interesting, won't you guys agree? Well, the results were in, and Judge Lake seemed about ready to deliver her final verdict on the mess these guys created. Let's find out who was the daddy. That Mr. Horn is not likely. <laughs> Your biological father. <laughs> See, son, you shouldn't have done this. No, you, you shouldn't, shouldn't have done this. this. The courtroom was about to become a battleground of truth and parenthood. Strap in, folks, because this ain't your regular episode. Mr. Harrington claimed the defendant was pinning a baby on him. Yep, he was singing that song, but the case was just getting started. Mr. Harrington, you claim you are not the father of Miss Day's one-month-old daughter, Nalani Day, and want her to stop pinning her baby on you. You say your sexual relationship with the defendant ended before she got pregnant. Ms. Day, you say you would never attempt to pin a baby on a man without being sure he is the father. So the potential baby daddy dropped truth bombs, accusing the mama of playing pin the baby on the good dad game. Meanwhile, she was standing firm, claiming divine maternity. Oh, you won't believe what she testified to. She said she was the Virgin Mary if the baby wasn't for him. Ms. Day, those are strong allegations. If what do you do? he is not the father of my child, I am the Virgin Mary. There is no other. There is no other possibilities. I have not been messing around with anybody else the throughout Mary. the time that we were messing around. Well, you... So you are one hundred percent positive, Mr. Harrington, that is yes. your child's biological yes, father. Yes, ma'am. Who knew an MRI appointment would turn into getting the news of a lifetime? Well, that happened to our dear Ms. Day. Oh, the glamour. However, Baby Daddy soon jumped into evidence of why he was not the guy the woman was looking for. Oh, it was one heck of a text chain. So when tell me when that, you found out you were pregnant. When I found out that I was pregnant, um, I, I went to go and take an MRI. I was doing a brain study, went to go and take an MRI. When I went to go take the, the MRI, um, before you take it, they have to give you a pregnancy test because it can affect your pregnancy or whatever. So when I went to go and take the pregnancy test, they came back and they told me that I was pregnant. So text messages from an anonymous tipper missed cycles and a sprinkle of denial. That was what created this paternity chaos. And it was brimming with some more as the baby daddy delved deeper into his doubts, taking us right along with him. That must be nice. That's how I found out. Then I go, I asked my sister, I called her or whatever. I was like, so I heard you was hiding a pregnancy. She was like, she 
Kayla didn't want me to tell you. And she was also saying that you the daddy. And I'm like, how? When she ain't talking to me. So I try to call her. She not answering the phone. He's trying to trying to flip it around. Oh, I don't I answer his call on a on a on a daily, on a on a regular she, basis. Yeah, I don't she, answer the call. She do it. Oh, something was definitely amiss. And you can see the confidence with which mommy started testifying, slowly crumbling as all the skeletons in her closet come out to play. But first, let's sort out the mystery of the two guys she was texting in the shadows. It wasn't. It, it was. There there God is one, there is two. a guy number one and a guy number two, but not a guy number one and a guy number two potentially to be my my child's father. But well, you believe you were pregnant before you start talking to these guys. I know I was pregnant before then. I want to go to the birth of no. Nalani. And I want to understand, once he finds out you're pregnant, mm -hmm. are you supportive of this pregnancy, Mr. Harrington? Well, doubts were there. But daddy still showed up at the hospital. Now we got to hear that story from the defendant's witness. Because her version took the cake in this who's the daddy saga. Do you are her witness Nothing. that Mr. Harrington is Nalani's biological father? Because when he came to the hospital, he asked her not to be named Nalania. He wanted her to be named Naya. Oh. Um, they just trying to make He don't want to admit nothing because he feel, because his girlfriend told him that if he's the father to this baby, that he would have to, they would break up. Now that all made this last part all the more interesting, won't you guys agree? Well, the results were in and Judge Lael seemed about ready to deliver her final verdict on the mess these guys created. Let's find out who was the daddy. Mr. Harrington, you are not Told the you. What? Told you, Are bro. you serious? Told you, can I really rock? No, no, you can't. Ms. Hooker believes that the defendant's son, Mr. Abraham, is the father of her 10-month-old daughter, Kanaya. She says the public denial by Mr. Abraham's family has caused her pain, and she's in court for two things, a DNA test to put the matter to bed once and for all, and an apology for the pain she's been caused. Unfortunately, Mr. Abraham isn't in court today because he was killed three months after Kanaya was born. How have you been affected by Ms. Baker's doubts about Kanaya's paternity? I'm just sad sometimes. I try to deal with it now. Like, I really don't care no more. That's how I feel. I don't care anymore. I don't care who feel nothing about my baby. I don't care. It just seemed like everybody else looking upside my head like I'm an animal or something. Like, Every time I'm well, sitting down doing something, they looking at me like I'm just, I, I'm the outcast of the group. She looked like me. So why is a problem? That's why I say I don't care about nothing. Ms. Hooker has really strong emotions about the denial of her child's paternity. But the Bakers, Mr. Abraham's family members, don't care about that at all. So, Ms. Baker, explain to the court why there's doubt that Keyshawn is Kanaya's biological father. My son was on vacation, and we, we kept hearing that Denia was pregnant, but then when we finally found out for sure, he told me, he said he wasn't the only boy that had messed with Denia. Mr. Shepard had also made his mother promise to conduct a DNA test of Ms. Hooker's child to see if he was truly her father. Unfortunately, he isn't around to see the results of that test because he was gunned down. Before he died, Mr. Abraham told his mother that he knew of another man who had slept with Ms. Hooker, and that man had told him something that puts the paternity claims Ms. Hooker is making in question. You know, what did the other young man say? He told Keyshawn that when he wasn't around, he was supposedly sleeping with Denia. Miss Hooker, I have to ask you, was there another guy? No, cause that's why it's funny, because how could somebody tell me who I was sleeping with? Nobody in the room was, was in the room with me when I was sleeping with somebody. What do I have to lie? Well, that's an interesting laugh. Ms. Hooker's mom says that Mr. Abraham never actually denied Ms. Hooker's baby. She says that he was always over at their house playing with the baby and taking care of her. She says he only had doubts when he was angry with Ms. Hooker. Now, if that's true, it puts into question the claims Ms. Baker has been making. Ms. Hooker's mother also says that the Bakers have always talked smack about her daughter and they all hate her. From what I ever heard about my family, nobody ever talked about her. It all occurred so in her house. Then when I, I know my mom said something about, she had a birthday dinner and my mom did tell me, she said something about, she think I didn't like her or, you know, things like that. Maybe her perception of what other people view of her is just her perception because she, she has to understand that sometimes it's hard. Well, we can actually understand that, can't we? But the child doesn't have to be a reminder that her brother's not there. It can also be a reminder that her brother left a legacy. It can be both. You just gotta know how to slice it. Keyshawn accepted that he was the father of this child. Child. Yeah, in my mind. From my the mind. way he behaved at your home. Mm -hmm. But mom, Ms. Baker, did he have, did he give you any proof or anything that there was this other guy? Because Ms. Uh, Hooker testified that this was the only person she was sleeping with at that time. I think he just went off what 
they're saying in their circle of kids. So Mr. Abraham had no evidence and just thought that Ms. Hooker was sleeping around while she was with him. At this point, you kind of think it's obvious that the baby would belong to Mr. Abraham since he has no evidence that Ms. Hooker was two-timing him. And the truth is, Ms. Baker, and, and you're right. Right now. You're right. Judge, my daughter really feels some type of way. Of, it's not that she feels some type of way. It's like she more hurt behind the obituary. And Miss Carolyn has explained to her about the obituary, how the obituary went, but in her heart, she feel like Miss Bland left her out of the obituary on purpose. So, and that's why she have so much animosity toy, towards Toy. I just feel like this. This come back and it's the baby. I don't want her. I don't want no sorries from nobody. Keep your sorries. I don't want no sorries. Well, things are starting to boil over and Miss Hooker is starting to make violent threats. If she feels so strongly about the child being for Mr. Abraham, then it must be, right? Well, let's test that theory. Since Mr. Abraham isn't alive to get his blood tested, the DNA test was done to determine if there's a relationship between Mr. Abraham's parents and Kanaya. Kanaya Abraham. It has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Baker, Mr. Abraham, and Kenaya Abraham is 0%. And this, this is why right here. Ms. Baker, are you all right? Do you need no. to sit down? Do you need it's to sit not. down, ma'am? That's insane! And Ms. Hooker was just here laughing sarcastically and screaming at Mr. Abraham's family. And she did all of that knowing that there was a possibility that he wasn't the father. That's an insane thing to do. But it gets even worse. Ms. Hooker decides that she wants to physically fight Mr. Abraham's sister. So do all my mom's apology, though. That's who I'm, you owe one. No, excuse me. Because you know you slept with somebody else. Ms. Hooker! Ms. Hooker! No, 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 no. Hey, go in there! Go in there! Go in there! You do too much! I don't care because you always think you're going to me. I know this has been emotional for everyone. And so, uh, Denia and her mom are sitting with Dr. Jeff right now. Uh, yes, I am. Dumb. I've always been glad. You That's why you never glad. knew it. You thought you was. Holla at your girl. Let's rock. Miss <laughs> Percy is in court today to prove that Mr. Gale is the father of her daughter, 26 year old Tedria Glenn. Mr. Gale denies this totally and is in court today with his wife to prove that he isn't Tedria's father. Miss Percy also claims she spent over $200,000 to raise Tedria, and Mr. Gale contributed absolutely nothing to that. Mr. Gale says this isn't his fault as he only found out that Tedria might be his daughter when he was 15 and that he is scared that his wife might leave him if she finds out that Tedria is his. Miss Percy is convinced Mr. Gale is only denying Tedria because of his wife. Miss Percy. Yeah. Why do you think Mr. Gale is denying your daughter? Because of his wife. I don't know why she won't let this man be a man and be your with Honor. his children. Your he Honor. needs to spend time my with his children. My wife never stopped me from seeing any of my kids. Mr. Gale, that is so not true. Every time my daughter calls him, it's like, oh, I can't talk to you right now. Miss Percy says that anytime Tedria calls her father, he never picks up because of his wife. Mr. Gale says he does this because he doesn't want to disrespect his wife. But how does that even make any sense? Speaking to your child doesn't mean you're disrespecting your wife, right? How if would I you knew that was my daughter, your wife? I this could is your daughter. If that, I knew that was my daughter. It's your daughter. I could talk to her wherever it's your daughter. I be. Mr. Gale, tell me, were you all in a committed relationship? It was committed. We was seven years. It wasn't no seven. Years. You were How long was it? Mm. Like four or five years. Things are about to get complicated. Mr. Gale says he got married in 2003 and was with his wife for 15 years before they got married. And get this, Tedria was born in 1988, which means that Mr. Gale started his relationship with his wife around the same time Tedria was conceived. Miss Percy admits this and says that she and Mr. Gale were sleeping together even when Mr. Gale was dating his wife. So if you were together 15 years, that would put you way before you were together with your wife way before right, we broke that up a Ms. long was, time but ago we were still sleeping together we slept together we were sleeping time. together the whole time you was with tanya no we wasn't we yes, slept we together was. one time your honor he's still trying to sleep with <gasps> what? That's cute. Oh, don't you. lie. Don't lie. Mr. Gale shocks Judge Lauren by saying that he's not the father because Miss Percy already had another person tested for Tedria's paternity. To him, this means that there's significant confusion around her paternity, and it's far from a decided thing that he's her father. Miss Percy admits this but says, since the first person who was tested wasn't Tedria's father, then Mr. Gale has to be. Okay, Miss Percy, that's great logic. But what if there's a third person? I asked my brother for Mr. Gale's number. When I asked my brother for Mr. Gale's 
number, I called Mr. Gale and I initiated a paternity test. I said, you know, I've been hearing all my life that you've been my dad and I look just like you. Me and my brother just mm -hmm. look just alike. And, you know, I've been hearing all these rumors, but it's like at that time, I felt like I was old enough to find out for myself. Well, that's just horrible behavior from Mr. Gale. You can't ask a teenager who may be your daughter to pay for a paternity test. And it doesn't make it any better that you want to go half and half with her mother on that test, especially when you know that you were having unprotected intercourse with her. When I asked her, I said, Tell your mother if she if your mother can go half of me on a paternity test. That her was mother after the never fact. got back to me, never said that anything. That was after the fact. That mm -hmm. was just recently. Mm -hmm. no. That was just recently the no. past year no. when no. you was like, oh, you need to find out no. where you really come no. from. No. Like as if I'm a charity case. Miss Percy, when you got pregnant, did you say to Mr. Gale? According to Mr. Gale, none of this is his fault because he never knew that Tedria was his child until very recently. And then Miss Percy and Mrs. Gale start going at it. Miss Percy. When you got pregnant, did you say to Mr. Gale, I'm pregnant and I think it's your child? No, I didn't. You didn't tell no. him a thing. My daughter was two. This man came to my house and my brother kept looking at Tedra. We all kept looking at Tedra like, damn, she looking different. She looking like this, this man here. And I'm like, he, he looked at her and he was like, oh, is that my daughter? Tedria says that she's built a good relationship with Mr. Gale, but Mrs. Gale doesn't respect that relationship. That's why she's here to know if Mr. Gale is her father for real and know for sure where she comes from. And that makes sense. Come on guys, who wouldn't want that? I'm thinking about you. It's about me knowing if this man is my daddy. Yep, we've been it. We've been talking for this past year. And when I say when we be on the phone, it's all laughs and giggles and we talk like this was meant to happen. It's come a time to where every time I get on the phone, she's like, oh, you're on the phone with your little friend. Mm. Like as if I'm nothing, I'm somebody. The emotion is raw and you can see that this hurts Tedria a lot, but Mrs. Gale doesn't care. This looks like a reality TV show to her and she could really care less what the DNA tests say. Tedria provides evidence outside of a DNA test to prove that she's Mr. Gale's daughter. The evidence is the resemblance she says exists between Mr. Gale and her. You do in fact believe there's a possibility that Miss Glenn could be your husband's child. When you look at her, do you see a resemblance? Could you show her she's the picture? She know, um, she I trying to be I don't funny. know. I have so evidence. I can't what evidence she do you like have her Evidence. For me, so Jerome, will picture. you hand me Miss so Lynn's evidence, picture. please? She and looks she said, like her mother see. to we me, but her. that doesn't mean that's not her father. Yes. The first piece of evidence is a picture of you, me, and Mr. Gale. And that's Mr. Gale. Yep. Wow, that's cold, Mr. Gale. Well, let's follow Mr. Gale's lead and check out the DNA test, too. That's all we can do at this point. Mr. Gale, you are not her father. <laughs> hear me, boo. Holler at your girl. Let's roll. <laughs> what, what you talking? <laughs> No problem. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. You glad. Yes, I am. I've always been glad. You That's why you never glad. knew it. You thought you was going to have me Mr. Gale. Oh, please. Mr. Gale and Miss Percy. I can't hear any more of this. What? Miss Percy is a real piece of work. How can she be arrogant despite being exposed as a liar so clearly? I know that's not what you wanted to hear today. What you don't know he probably is when you left have. the courtroom, the first thing he said was, I feel really bad. He says, and he asked, <laughs> could he come give you a hug? And I just told him to give you a moment. Now they can live happily ever after. Well, and don't I don't ever think have to worry about me. L Let oh, me tell man. you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Ms. Chappell is 101% certain that the defendant, Mr. Todd, is her daughter, Walisha's biological father. She says that Mr. Todd only denies Walisha because his fiance, Ms. Collins, doesn't want Mr. Todd in Ms. Chappell's life. Mr. Todd says there's absolutely zero chance that Walisha is his and argues that Ms. Chappell will stop at nothing to pin a child on him that isn't his. Mr. Todd also claims that Ms. Chappell destroyed his window, so there's that. So, Ms. Chappelle, why do you feel you're owed $2,475 for these expenses? Um, because um, I was had a job, Your Honor, and he was babysitting the baby for me. And after he didn't babysit anymore, I had to start paying seventy-five dollars a week for babysitting fees and lost wages. And I didn't have a babysitter, and I couldn't keep up with the babysitting fees, so I had to quit my job, and I don't have a job anymore. And here's my papers right here. Miss Chapel says Mr. Todd owes her some money for stopping his babysitting duties for Walisha, and Mr. Todd says that's a lie because he never actually watched the baby. He also says he's never been in a relationship with Miss Chapel and only ever had casual intercourse with her. You two were in a sexual relationship, right? right? Yes. yes. It wasn't and no what relationship. Of, it wasn't a relationship. No. no. You were just having sex. Just having sex. If you were having sex and she got pregnant, were you using protection every time? No. 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 no.
pregnant. But at that point, yeah, when we met, she was pregnant. She was already pregnant with a baby. But he accepted it. But the other baby, while he's with someone else's baby. What? Are we hearing that properly? Okay, Ms. Chapel had a baby in her belly before she met Mr. Todd. She gave birth to that child and now has given birth to another baby that she claims belongs to Mr. Todd. Why is it you doubt that Walicia is your child? Because at the time, she was messing around with other guy and by me being young and, 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 and just doing crazy stuff, I go and mess with her at the same time too. So she was messing with men all at one time. But this one, never my girl, I had, I was in a relationship with someone yeah. at that time and she was messing around too. Mr. Todd repeats that he's never dated Miss Chapel, and at the time he was messing about he was in a relationship with another person. He's saying yes he may be a cheat but he ain't no baby daddy. Good for you Mr. Todd. However you don't need to be in a relationship to get someone pregnant. So Miss Chappelle do you admit that you were having sex with other people in addition to Mr. Todd during the window of conception? No you honor. She a liar. She was not even in the picture you honor so she has she, nothing she to do with this. Wait, we was what together picture that was? 2011, oh, I was pregnant was? with someone oh, else, baby. Our baby was God, already here when they met you, Honor. All right. Our uh, babies were here before she came in. Listen, quiet. All right. All right. Ms. Collins now wants to talk about the windows she says Ms. Chapel destroyed. She says that Ms. Chapel stole Mr. Todd's phone and then busted her windows while she was in it. I have proof well, and I have a false report town. that Come she busted my wonders out on Do my you car. have that evidence here today? I do, no. ma'am. I'd like to see it, please. Thank you. This is and an incident report it. which says there was damage to private property. Vehicle. And I do have the receipt too, Your Honor. Windows were damaged. I'd like to see the receipt too, this please. This is proof too. This is the receipt for the window repair. Total $375. Yes, Your Honor, that's Ms. Chappelle did. Why would you even bust someone's car windows? This doesn't make Ms. Chappell look good at all. Anyway, Ms. Chappell says she doesn't care about whether or not someone's window was busted. She only wants the DNA test for her child, Walisha. You don't have to rush, Ms. Chappell. We are getting there eventually. I said, well, we can move her in just so we can get tests to see if this is your baby. Therefore, that we can move forward with. It didn't work out that way. We was taking the baby when she's out having sex with different guys, coming in different night times of night while she's gone. Okay, and so you feel like you moved her in and then she was avoiding getting the DNA test. And what made me have doubt is this is not his baby. She doesn't look like Mr. Todd. Ms. Chapel says she's certain that Mr. Todd is her baby's daddy because when she told him she was pregnant, he said he would be there for her and would accept the baby. Okay, that sounds great and nice, but you know what that isn't? It isn't a DNA test, and it isn't proof that Mr. Todd is Walisha's father. The fact that he may have promised to accept the pregnancy doesn't mean he's biologically related to the baby. Anyway, here is what the DNA test says. Mr. Todd, you are not the father. Oh. And you know you're, you're smiling, Miss Chappelle? Yes, because girl. at the She's end of the pretty, day, this is a song with that did they you say. Know. I ain't having sex with no one else. You on? I know this only man I'll miss with this time. Yep, I know it. Miss Chappelle, you were obviously having sex it. with at least one other person. Ms. Mitchell here says that she first met Mr. Jordan at a courthouse when he was taken to court for paternity testing. She says he didn't submit to the test but claimed her and began paying child support. Mr. Jordan says he paid child support not because he felt that he was Ms. Mitchell's dad, but because he felt pity for her. Besides, he says he had no real relationship with Ms. Mitchell's mother, who's not in court today because she died of breast cancer a while back. Did you have doubt in your mind, though, during that time? I've always had doubts, ma'am, but it was nothing I could do about it. He never tried I had to be a father. I had accepted the fact that uh, I had a one night affair, bit bam, thank you, ma'am, with her mom one time. And after that, I never thank saw her again. Thank you for telling me that. I appreciate for seven that. Thank to eight you years, for okay? having that image in my head. You say you did your best to try to establish a relationship. Yes. Wow, that's harsh. Ms. Mitchell says that Mr. Jordan may have stepped up in terms of providing child support for her, but he never gave her any attention. Even when she came to him about fixing her car, he only gave her instructions and let her do the whole thing. That, of course, had disastrous consequences. What was your understanding, Ms. Mitchell? My understanding was he was my father and we were supposed to try to build a relationship, but he never came around. Every time I tried to call him, he always blow me off. Every time, it, it, it was like every once or twice a year, I see him every two, three years. I had asked him to get my car fixed. 
when he uh, said, yeah, I coach you, he said, I will walk you through it. The person laughing right there is Mr. Jordan's other child, Miss Wagoner, and she's supposed to be Miss Mitchell's elder sister. And she's laughing at a situation where Miss Mitchell almost lost her life. That shows you just how psycho she is. Did you stand there with her? Yes, yeah, I did. he stood there with me. He stood there with me as I was doing my own breaks. He made sure that all the books were so-called tightened up. I left, went to work the next day. My brakes came off on the freeway. Wow. Yes, I had. I, I was scared, I didn't know what to do. So I had to sit up there and figure out how to get off the freeway without crashing into the wall. So I grabbed the, uh... You still here? That's dangerous, you know that. Hey. That's such a horrible thing to say. Mr. Jordan and his other daughter are laughing at a situation where Ms. Mitchell almost lost her life. At this point, you'll probably be hoping that Mr. Jordan isn't her father at all because it must be exhausting trying to be relatives with people like this. Ms. Mitchell says Mr. Jordan has continued to be a standoffish father even at her most vulnerable moments. She ever call me, y'all, when she wants something. I need That's something. That's not true. That's not so true. So I want to understand from your childhood, what was it like? Did you have a relationship with him after this day? Do you remember being in that courtroom when you were seven years old? Well, when I was seven years old, I remember him. I remember sitting on a bench, and the judge asked me, do you know who your father is? I said, no. That's when he came up and said what he said about, well, I'll be her father. Okay, Mr. Jordan, how's that even better? You didn't know that your daughter was pregnant and had a child and lost the child? That's just horrible parenting, no matter what. You claim you tried to call him daddy once. Yes, I did. And what happened? He told me to call him Jordan. Is that true, Mr. Jordan? I tell everyone to call me Jordan. Except her. Mm -hmm. That's his <laughs> your, daughter. Your daughter. Well, I raised this one. Okay. <laughs> that's his daughter. So why is it that she can't call you daddy, too? I'm not, hey, I'm not I'm not even, your daughter? I, I don't know. That's why I'm here today. It seems there's no limit to the horrible things that Mr. Jordan will say in this courtroom. He doesn't seem to care that the DNA test may show that he's Miss Mitchell's father. He doesn't care about her pain, her struggles, or anything. One even starts to wonder why he's here at all. Now let's hear directly from Ms. Wagoner. How did you regard Ms. Mitchell growing up? I'm the first one, so okay. of course. Of course she always thinks she first. I am the everything. first one. We don't know nobody else. Don't whatever, girl, stop whatever, with your whatever, face. whatever. This is fake right here, all this crap. <laughs> That's all no, fake. What you are she is, is not like that. That is all fake. No, Do no, you, bro. girl, stop playing. Whatever, you don't whatever. do what I tell you to do, because I'm whatever, big No, no, no you don't whatever. tell me to do nothing. Whatever. And you do it. No, I don't. You do it. You know what, guys? This is exactly how sisters fight, and it seems Ms. Wagoner accepts that Ms. Mitchell is her sister. She just doesn't like Ms. Mitchell that much. Anyway, it's time to see the results and see whether Ms. Mitchell has spent her life living a lie or Mr. Jordan has missed out on a lifetime of meaningful connection with his biological daughter. Mr. Jordan, you are her father. What do you feel, Ms. Mitchell? I guess I just want him to treat me better as a yes, daughter. Yes. The thing is, is, like, I would like to leave this court with, with one frame of thought, okay? Oh, what is your frame of thought? Anytime, anytime your woman, your wife, your girlfriend, tell you that she pregnant, I suggest any and everybody go talk to Dana. Now this wasn't her first time coming to the paternity court. She had been here before. Guess what? The initial reason that brought her here is the same damn reason that she's here again. Some people don't just learn. I hope you guys are ready. It's gonna be one traumatizing show. Miss Kavanaugh, you appeared in our courtroom previously and tested two men as potential fathers of your one-month-old son, Malcolm. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, neither turned out to be his biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, today, you believe Malcolm's biological father is a good friend of your mother's, the defendant, Mr. Spence. Yes, Your Honor. I hope you guys are ready to hear some of the most shocking things to ever be said. Miss Kavanaugh was no good girl, trust me. She had been quite mischievous. This time around, she didn't just get intimate with any random guy. She got intimate with her mom's friend. She has some serious balls, trust me. Miss Kavanaugh. Yes, Your Honor. Your mother's friend? Yes, Your Honor. I, I know how bad it sounds. Um, it is bad. Um, I started calling him up asking for like rides, you know, to the grocery store, you know, to get stuff from my house. And like subconsciously, I was trying to try to seduce him. I was wearing inappropriate things around him. The things Miss Kavanaugh said would make a priest want to go to confession. They were beyond this world, believe me. Mr. Sense, on the other hand, didn't sound convincing when defending himself. I mean, do you just randomly sleep with your friend's daughter? Hell no! How did you end up being in the position that you were sleeping with your really good friend's daughter? It was like she said, uh, 
came over a couple of times. She was in inappropriate gear. The first time, I shunned it off. Second time, I said, hey, watch yourself. Third time, it's starting to look good. Fourth time, lapse in judgment, and here we are today. Listening to everything that pops out of both their mouths was really uncomfortable. But let's proceed, shall we? I mean, there was one month old kid involved. These two really do need some counseling. So as you look at Malcolm, do you see Mr. Spence? Any resemblance? I see a little bit, but from being in court previously, I found out that you can't always go on looks at all. When you found out you were pregnant, did Mr. Spence's name come to mind immediately? Um, no, Your Honor. Moving on! When Miss Kavanaugh found out she was pregnant, Mr. Spence's name did not pop up in her head as the potential father. Damn! Apparently, she wasn't just fooling around with him. I would definitely give her an ass whooping if she were my child. I thought Mr. Bo Mr. Bowles was the dad. Well, after the court, I started thinking, well, he could be a possibility that Mr. Spence is the father. And I texted him and I asked him, when was the last time we had sex? He told me it was the end of October. So I And when was Malcolm born? He was born July 9th. Miss Kavanaugh's mom took the stand and oh boy, did she have a lot to say about her daughter and her so-called friend. She said she noticed the eye contact they gave each other when they met. Deep down in her heart, she knew something was gonna go down. You did. Yeah, I know, I, and I knew my gut woman's pulled. intuition. Exactly. So I questioned each of them. They each denied that anything had happened. Um, I, then basically how I found out, one day Megan was angry with me and we had kind of a little tiff or whatever. It was kind of a big tiff, but when we did, she blurted out that you were right. And I did, I did sleep with Ken. The courtroom was filled with nothing short of shock. The most insane revelations start to surface, and these two had a lot of explaining to do. Another epic blockbuster takes the stage. Mr. Spencer happens to be married. I knew this guy had some secrets. He was willing to be the father, but he sure had doubts. Why exactly do you have doubts? My doubt is, first of all, it was only once. The window of conception that she described. I'm baby there. born in July. I'm there, yeah. I'm, so I'm, you you I'm within in the period. window of conception. I, I'm in you don't period. dispute that. that. I do not dispute All right. That's why I'm here. Right. That is why I'm here. Do you have any knowledge as to whether or not she was sleeping with other people during yes. that time? Yes, she told me. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Spence and Miss Kavanaugh. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Mr. Spence, you are not his father. It's okay. It's okay. I know this isn't where you wanted to be. It's okay. After finding out she had a terminal illness, Miss Holshue seeks to uncover the true identity of who her biological father is, only to find out the most shocking surprises on her journey. It's one roller coaster to the next in this episode. Let's dive right into it. Miss Holshue, you claim your mother had an affair with the defendant's father, and today you're in court to prove that he is your biological father. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, it is. Miss Howard, you and your sisters say Miss Holshue is a delusional troublemaker whose promiscuous mother destroyed your family and ruined your home. Now things get really heated in a matter of seconds. It felt like they all hated themselves from their previous lives. Apparently, the alleged father had passed away, but his daughters for sure weren't going to welcome Miss Holshue with open arms. Mr. Howard both told me that he was my father and also family members on his side of the family have also said that I'm his daughter. And, and you also I'm in the obituary as his daughter. You are? Yes, I am, ma'am. That was a big mistake that her name was put into the obituary. Our father's sister did that. No. And did not tell any of us about it. Our father didn't even mention her. Nope. Miss Holshue found out she had a real dad in the most awkward way. Trust me, your mind isn't gonna believe what you're about to hear. Her stepdad and mom were having an argument. Boom, the bomb drops and she can't believe what she hears. How did you find out? <laughs> Cause my stepdad was drunk and um, he was fighting with my mother and he said, well, who do you think your father is? And so after that, my mother told me and um, she took me and introduced me to DL and uh, we had a relationship 
from then on. Now the sisters for sure weren't going easy on Miss Holshue. They felt she was an imposter who was trying to spoil their family's name. They stood their ground and denied every single thing Miss Holshue said in the courtroom. Trust me, it was quite a show. To contact with Miss Holshue. Yes. How old were you all when I, this meeting happened? I was 19 at the time. So you remember this day? Oh, uh, with clearly, like it was yesterday. They were sitting in a booth with my dad across from her and her mother. I was standing at the end and he said, uh, I just brought you guys here to let you know that she's your sister. And really? that was the one and only time that my dad ever mentioned her till the day he died. Some really interesting stories started to fly around the courtroom. Everyone was trying to air out their minds and beliefs. In the process, some nasty revelations jumped out. Trust me, they weren't nice and some of it was just super fishy. But Miss Holshue stood her ground. We had packed up our things and moved out because my father had gone to where, at the bar where her mother was working and caught her cheating on him. That gave me no topic. Uh, the thought that obviously her mother probably has no idea who any of her children belong to. Really? It's not my fault you guys don't wanna know me. It's not my fault that your dad had sex with my mother and I was, I'm was i a product of that. The courtroom was pretty heated up at this point, with both parties throwing shades at each other. Another of their sisters walks into the courtroom. Surprisingly, she's on Miss Holshue's side. She believes that there is a chance that Miss Holshue is her sister. Now that's interesting, wouldn't you say? What is your opinion? I believe that she is. You do? Tell yes, the court why. Because my father told me that she was. She just needs a family, Your Honor, because her whole family, she she's shut out. They've shot her no, out because she's such a devil. Girl. Tell me about that moment when you were informed or your father told you. Well, we were out one day and I was about 19 and he said that he wanted me to meet one of his girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Now she had quite a lot to say. Not only did she back up Miss Holshue's claim of being their sister, she also said their father was no saint. He was also messing around with another woman. Wow. Miss Holshue's mother had been sleeping around, had yes. a reputation. Yes. And As so they did didn't he. believe it. As did he. Oh, we don't. Our, our, our dad, dad is all of our heroes. That our father slept. He, he is our hero to this day. And I'm not going to bash him, but yes, he loved women, and that's just the way it was. Some men hunt, some men don't. The tension was palpable, but no worries, because the moment of truth was here. Time to spill the beans on whether she was really his daughter or it was all a joke. All eyes were on the judge as she got ready to give the final verdict. Cue the mic drop. That the probability of half siblingship between Diana Howard and Misty Lynn Holshue is 98.1%. Ah! I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> Looking at his face, you could tell he had been through the worst days of his life. From having a manipulative girlfriend to thinking he may or may not be the father of the girlfriend's son, this man has been on a journey of roller coasters. Trust me, I hope you're ready. Your minds are about to be blown proving to your boyfriend that he fathered your seven-month-old son, Kahari. You testify that his paternity denial is tearing you apart. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Thomas, you claim that after finding pictures of Ms. Yancey and the baby with another man, you are convinced you are not Kahari's biological father. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So, Ms. Yancey, tell us why this court date is so important. Well, it's important because, um, well, we've been ha Living in denial of being the father of their child, Mr. Thomas is determined to find out who really owns the kid in the picture. Now, don't think their story didn't start off as a love story because it did. But I guess not every love story ends up with the princess having her prince charming and a perfect family. You don't know if you're going to stay or you're going to go. Where are you at with this? Um, right now, Honor, Your Honor, it's... It's hard, you know, because I do love her and all. And throughout the whole relationship, we always talked about having a child together. But, you know, now it's like we're at a point where we're at, it's a child, but I possibly might not be the father. It, it kind of hurts, so. And Kahari is seven months old. And you worried about, is it your baby? Yes, Your Honor. Oops, now there's trouble in their little paradise and it looks like everything is hanging on the line. The trust issues start to spiral into the relationship and things start to fall apart with both Mr. Thomas and Miss Yancey seeing different people. An open relationship now? Well, I didn't see that coming. Us just not being pretty much truthful with each other and um yeah and even like she said even at the time we were both seeing someone we were still seeing each other so it wasn't like well were you broken up or were you together more like friends with benefits oh. yeah 
Well... But were you also dating and sleeping with other people? The tension starts to build. They start yelling at each other and it turns into a total mess. We broke up, but we didn't break up. It wasn't a serious breakup. You still needed me on and on and on. Even the judge has to shut them up at some point. If you ask me, these two definitely need a therapist. If you're in a relationship with somebody, we, we, we weren't in a you don't go and like... give another man a, a ride and not- But I thought up... y'all said you all were broken right. up. Right, exactly. When we were breaking up, That's not to me, I felt like we were over. If we were I over, felt and I told him that multiple times. If we were so we're over, done. You don't call me. Don't come to my house. Do not disturb me. Leave me alone. Things get pretty cozy, and Miss Yancey finds out she's pregnant. I know what you're thinking. Could it be for Mr. Thomas? Or could it be for one of the guys she was hanging out with while on a break? Well, hold your breath. You're in for a surprise of a lifetime, trust me. Uh, Mr. Thomas, take me to the time you found out Miss Yancey was pregnant. When did you find that out? We were sitting at my mom's house, and, you know, she came and she said that she took a pregnancy test and she's pregnant. And I'm like, you know, I was happy for the simple fact that over the years we were trying to conceive and have a baby. And I'm, I'm, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, yes, it finally happened. And then after she told me, she left and texted me that the baby might not be mine. Boom! Miss Yancey drops the bomb in the courtroom, going on about how baby daddy might not be the dad of the kid. I bet you didn't see that coming now, did you? Tension starts to rise again and things aren't looking pretty anymore. Even though you sent that text back and said it might not be your child. Yes, I explained to him that, you know, I was skeptical and even though even though she was skeptical you know she told me and i had my doubts but at the same time it was like the 50 uh, 50 percent chance it is mine i don't want to have the son you know what i mean born yes. in this world without being there for him so regardless i stepped i stepped up and right. As you, you know what I mean, chose to be there for him. Like the good guy Mr. Thomas is, he was there for Miss Yancey and the baby. All he wanted to do was be a good daddy, but was his heart crushed? Well, I guess we'll find out soon. The emotions start to rip open through his mind. He has himself throwing questions in his mind. Is this baby mine? Does this kid really belong to me? I tell you, he is in troubled waters. You come with uh, emotions, you know what I mean? I'm happy, I'm like, you know, it's about time. I see him and it's like, he's a handsome young man, but I just don't feel like he's mine. Why? Who did he look like? He looked like his mother. So what's wrong with that? I mean, it's a new baby. Yeah, She's yeah. the mother. Hey, yeah, and it, it's true, but you know, I, I, it's this thing I used to say, like, if it looks like the mother too much, then it might not be the, the it might not be the father or something. Oh. Now all hell breaks loose. Baby daddy goes through her phone and finds out she's been texting another guy, saying that could be his child. Now that's just insane. Who does that? Mr. Thomas's mind comes down like a glass shattered into several pieces, with all doubts looking like a reality. When do you start doubting again? Um, we had took a trip to uh, Fresno to go visit family, and I end up going through her phone and I noticed that she has pictures with Kahari and the other man that could possibly be the father. Why were you taking pictures with the other guy, Miss Yancey? My mom looked at him and she told me straight up, I don't think that that's Maurice's son, and I think that you should get in contact with his biological father. Well, it's finally time to unveil the truth after so many lies and deceptions. The day of reckoning is finally here with everyone itching to know the truth. Are you ready to find out? I bet you are. So take a deep breath because here it comes. Mr. Thomas, you are not the father. I'm very sorry. It's okay, Your Honor. It's all right. I mean, I, could, I still love her and I still love him at the end of the day, but if she wants a father-son relationship with Kahari and the other man, then I feel like there's no need for me to try to build. Miss Seaton dragged her mother to court because she believed her mother committed paternity fraud. Apparently there was no trust between Miss Seaton and her mother and she was desperate to know who her real father was. Are you ready? I bet you are. Let's get on with it. Miss Seaton, you've brought your mother to court because you claim she committed paternity fraud and lied to you about the identity of your biological father. You were raised believing one man was your father, but are here to prove another is your dad. You've petitioned the court for a paternity test to finally prove the truth. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. It felt like Miss Seaton and Miss McPeak, who happened to be her mother, shared almost no love at all. Miss Seaton claimed she had not seen her mother in almost five years. Damn, that's a really long time to go without seeing your mother, trust me. She even called her a liar. Well, Your Honor, um, I just want to start by saying I haven't seen her talk to this woman in five years, almost, almost five years. The reason that I haven't seen her talk to her in, in almost five years is because she's a liar. I was raised to think that a man named Jesse Seaton was my biological father. Uh, he signed my birth certificate, he cut my umbilical cord, and he, he, was, he was awesome. I have since found out 
that um, there was another possibility that Mr. Bryson could be my father. You can see the tension between the two ladies in the courtroom. Being that they haven't had any relationships in over five years, they couldn't even maintain eye contact with each other. Trust me, that's just really sad. I wouldn't want to be in those shoes. So my grandmother and my uncle Paul had both donated blood for the blood transfusion and it came out that they were not either one of them wasn't a match. So they couldn't give me the blood. Why do you look like she's not telling the truth, Miss McPeak? It's untrue. How do you respond? Because she's a liar. She always has been. She does whatever she can to hurt anybody. She doesn't have a heart at all. Oh. But is she lying about the hospital saying there's not yes. a match? Yes, she is. Miss McPeak wasn't having any of that. She stood her ground and said everything her daughter was saying was all in her head and there was no truth to it. She hit the nail on the head and called her a big ass liar. Damn. Statement from Karen Hutchins. Karen's never liked me. She's a, just as big as liar as her granddaughter. <laughs> Plain and simple. She never thought that I was good enough for a son. He could have had DNA at that time and he didn't want DNA. He said he was 100% sure it was his. And ever since Jessica's been old enough to talk, maybe kindergarten, she's been nothing but an habitual liar. Now, Miss Seaton was just talking out in the wind. She was firm. She listed instances that made everyone doubt if her mother was actually telling the truth. Trust me, you wouldn't believe the things that were said in that courtroom. They were mind blowing. Oh, come on. What exactly are Miss Seaton and Miss McPeak playing at? What exactly is their aim here? They're just going round in circles, calling each other liars. At this point, it's really hard to believe who might be telling the truth. Mr. Bryson, and your daughter about a DNA test, Ms. McPeak? No, everything she just said is a lie. Not one time ever did I tell her that we had DNA. That's a lie. Not one time ever did Greg Bryson even ask if it was his child. If I was not willing to have a DNA, I wouldn't be here today. So, Ms. McPeak, I need to ask you, how close in proximity were you intimate with both of these men? Now Mr. Bryson walks into the courtroom and he believes he is really Miss Seaton's father. He doesn't just believe he is her father. He has some really powerful statements to back up his claim. Oh boy, this was one hell of a paternity case, trust me. Mr. Bryson, thank you for joining us today. Yes, ma'am. I have a couple questions for you. Do you believe you are Miss Seaton's, Jessica's biological father? Yes, I can guarantee you, Your Honor. You do? Oh, yes. Why do you believe that? Look at her. She looks like my other daughter. I guarantee you, the money I got in my pocket, she's mine. Secondly, the grandmother, Jessie's mother, told me if she's between the ages of six and 10, that she knew that that was my daughter, not her son's. The moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty as to whether their stories and claims were true or not. Time to see what the future holds for them. I hope you guys are ready. The biological father is Mr. Bryson. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Just hug your daughter. Okay. You can stay with what your daughter. What did you love? This was completely traumatizing. These two brothers came to court because they had some real doubts that their uncle might actually be their father. Trust me, guys. It's a really crazy roller coaster. I hope your seats are locked in. Mr. Ellis, you and your brother have brought your mother to court today because you say you've always believed the man in this photograph is your father. Yes, Your Honor. Then, just recently, you learned that your biological father may actually be your father's brother. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Shivers, you confessed that you slept with both your ex-husband and his brother. Yes, Your Honor. You and now, Miss Shivers, who happened to be their mother, was one hell of a mischievous woman. She had a husband who she was intimate with, of course, then went on to sleep with his brother. Who in the world does that? He came up to me and said, you know I'm your son, you know you my son, right? You know, so. Yeah, it was basically like a family get together. It was a family function. You know how people get when they, you know, indulge or whatnot. Uh, I guess he, you know, he overindulged and the truth came to light, you know, so he it's approached my brother. It's not the truth. Well. Believe whatever you want to believe. Okay, we're leaving no. the door open. Believe well, what you want to believe. It up. Assume what you want to assume. Yeah. He assumes Ronnie's his dad. Now the crazy thing was that Miss Shivers did admit to being intimate with the two brothers. She was blaming it on the fact that she was lonely and had nowhere to go. Yeah, right. Like that makes any sense at all. I'm pretty speechless right now. We got intoxicated, we had a one-time thing and that was it, which was a big mistake, Your Honor, but you know, I mean, things happen. I had but... nowhere to lay my head and we grew up together. We're best friends. I did what I had to do to keep a roof over the head for this one, for the Eugene. 
I'm like, you know what? My mom did everything in her power and her will and everything to take care of us. Now, one of the brothers did admit that he noticed some really funny actions from his dad before he passed. I promise you guys, your ears aren't ready for what you are about to hear. These guys had one messed up family. You know, unfortunately, we had to take a trip down the road and my, my dad, my father, he wrote me more than he did my brother, you know what I'm saying? And you don't do that if that's your child, you know, you're supposed to be there through thick and thin like my mom, you know? I heard from her every day of, you know, that place or that situation, but when we were in that situation, he didn't reach out to my brother at all, not really, like, at all. Now, the craziest thing happens in the court, and it will leave you speechless. One of the brothers believes that his dad isn't his uncle. But here's where the shock comes in. His mom says, hold up! You might be wrong! There might be another man who is your father. Well, I told you, these guys have a really messed up family. Do you feel there are reasonable, credible doubts as it relates to Eugene as well? Yes, Your Honor, maybe so. What? Well, you want to hear it? That's I'm going to tell you. ain't never you. said that before. Well, and I asked you, who's my dad? John Ellis. You said John there Ellis. So now it's there a possibility is. somebody else might be my dad. Well, you got Come tested, on. son. We're going to bring it out. We'll bring it but, all uh, out. I'm telling the truth, so let's judge, bring it on out. Um, Whatever my babies want to know, I'll let you know. I didn't know that. Now let's get Uncle Dad into the courtroom. Mr. McClellan walks into the courtroom to give his side of the story. Well, guess what? He actually believes he is the father. Ain't no mind games here, people. It's starting to really look insane. Miss Shivers had some explaining to do. And they came back to Chicago and lived with me. And why they were living with me? She said we only had sex once. She must have meant we only had sex once sober. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's what she oh. must have meant, you know? Because she can't even remember the first time. You know? But you remember. Oh, boy. No more details needed. Okay. <laughs> Another truth bomb hits the air in the courtroom. Miss Shivers had to be one crazy woman. Trust me. She says that aside from the two brothers she got intimate with, there was a possibility that another man was in the picture. Oh, my God. Cool breeze. Um, I met him when I was waitressing in the restaurant, and he ran a big hotel. And he also you know, gave me jobs and stuff. That's when Eugene was like about four or five. We had a couple of little nights, you know, where we had a few drinks and we did have intimacy. He died. About time we draw the curtain on this paternity showdown. Will it be a double dose of daddy drama or will the clouds of uncertainty finally clear? The key to the truth was in the envelope. Here goes nothing. John Ellis is your father. I knew that. Look at me. Look at him. Okay, okay. John Ellis is your father. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh. I needed that. You hear me? I was getting ready. Sorry, Mom. Uh, it's all right. I told you, boys. The